Yeah, uh, Michael Elbeck from the Technikon University of Denmark. Um, I'm also, as already said, I'm the regional coordinator of Region North and uh, task leader of, uh, of the task of uh, the open air guidelines for data archive managers. So my presentation is called Open Air Guidelines for Data Archive Managers, but it probably should have been called for data archive managers, repository managers, managers of crisis. Um, but first, a little story about open air and about the open air guidelines. Open air is about linking. It's about linking publications to projects. But not just any publications, all projects. At least that was the beginning of open air, because open air had a very specific task Open Air was set out to support and monitor the implementation of the open access pilot in FP7, also called the Special Clause 39. So our strategy was to build on the existing repository infrastructure of Europe. Uh, basically, many of the participants of the driver project was in the project, and, um, <clears throat> and there was a, 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 a reason to reuse the work already done in Driver uh, and to harvest the repository and then link those articles to EC funded projects. So that resulted in the open air guidelines which were based on the driver guidelines. So that were guidelines with very specific requirements in supporting the goal of open air and the EC open access pilot. So getting peer reviewed articles from the repositories and link those articles to, to uh, projects by getting a grant agreement number from the repositories and then display the open access mode of the articles and possible the embargo period if such existed. So that was a very simple uh, approach we had and that was very intentional. We needed to get result very quickly. But the uptake was rather slow. So, new situation. Open Air, Open Air Plus, which is the continuation of Open Air, and we just call it Open Air. And as Natalia already presented to you, Open Air got publication repositories and data repositories, trying to link those to provide services. This means open air needs to be more inclusive. So, open air is a learning experience, it's a learning, whatever it's called, but um, we also have to un unlearn some things. So first of all, it's not just linking publications to projects that are funded by EC. For instance, a country like Denmark, I mean, EC funded research is less than 10% of the total uh, public spending or total spending on research. So if you just look and say to repository managers and universities in Denmark, you have to do this because it supports the open access policy of, policy of the EC. It might not be such a big leverage for making people change specifications for the repositories. Also, I mean, looking at repositories and other databases at universities, they might have a lot of different contents than just you know, research articles in them. And especially data is moving. And uh, we wanted to link data to the publications. Another thing we discovered by trying to get the data and get the results to try to monitor how much is open access of the output coming from EC funded projects, we found out, of course, that the content is, is key. So even though we might not get the formal information from the repository, through text mining, we can go a, lot, a long way to identify which publication was actually coming from an EC-funded project. So for open air, it is still very much in scope that we build an existing standard. We're not trying to invent something new. So that's why we're talking guidelines. It's not standards or anything like that. So the new approach for the open air guidelines, and I got the S underscore because it's 
several guidelines, it's three guidelines. It's guideline for literature repositories um, coming in a version three at some point, which means that we also will include links to citations to data, for instance. It's guidelines for data archive managers, which I will talk more about in a minute. And it's guidelines for quizzes. It's not because I'm tweeting, I'm just checking the time. Um, and um, so literature repositories. Another important step forward is that we are talking about different levels of compatibility. So before there was just one level of compatibility. That was you had to be compatible with the open air guidelines. That means you had to expose uh, a grant agreement number, you had to expose open access mode, you had to expose embargo periods. We're soon going to include driver, as uh, Natalia said. So that means we get a lot of re records from, from the driver set. So driver will be the basic entrance level to become part of the open air information space. But then there are a lot of, you could say, non-incremental levels of being compatible with open air not going to mention all of them, but repositories might include different types of these information that is relevant to expose in an infrastructure like open air. For data archives, we decided to go with the data side metadata scheme because it's a proven metadata standard for heterogeneous data sources and cross-disciplinary archives, and that was coherent with what we're doing in open air. It's proven to be useful in, for instance, the ANS data portal, the Australian National Data Services data portal. It uh, has a trusted and sustainable organization behind it. And we approached them because it had just had one problem for us was that it only accepted data that has had DOIs, which was natural because that's what data side promotes. Uh, so they were accepting to include other types of persistent identifiers. We still think it's a very good idea if there are DOIs, but there are other types of persistent identifiers out there. So Chris, you're a Chris. This is still very experimental, and I hope we can have a good discussion tomorrow about that. But for many universities, Chris's are becoming not only just the database you use for, for sort of monitoring the research, it's also becoming maybe a substitute for a repository or very integrated with the repository at the university. It might be the place you go to to harvest data to integrate in a service like OpenAir. So for that, we want to go on and work with Sharif XML. Um, again, Eurochris is an established and sustainable uh, organization that creates Sharif XML and therefore a good choice for including data from Chris systems. So a little more about data archive managers because this is the one of the guidelines that we are working on which is the most mature one. So build on data side which have currently the version 2.2 uh, of the metadata, uh, data side metadata schema. So some minor adjustments. So first of all, of course, that we accept other types of identifiers. That means that we included vocabulary for different kinds of identifiers that you can include <coughs> in the metadata. Also, we have some other requirements because if you look at the data site metadata schema, they have very limited requirements, well, mandatory fields that you need to have. And for a discovery service like Open Air, it is relevant to have exposed more information that you need in the data side, um, the data side metadata, metadata schema. So it provides many di different properties, but they are all, um, <coughs> a lot of them are not mandatory. So we recommend that you can link to publications, uh, to related publications and data sets. So that's one of the key issues for open air. And we also recommend that, recommend that, that you can um, relate data set to funding information. 
and that you can um, well <coughs> sorry <coughs> that you can make a we have we, we need to to have information about the rights of the data that is behind um, the data oh, sorry this is a bit confusing I'll not go into that more now <laughs> sorry um, so first of all we invite you to influence the development of our guidelines so tomorrow at the technical workshop I hope you'll join us many of you uh, to discuss obstacles possibilities for the guideline approach that we presented here so that's it